to Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo, here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. You've heard me talk about The importance of knowing, liking, and trusting the people that you're doing business with. And from a rebelpreneur standpoint, you want to do all that you can to position you, your product, your service, your business, or your brand as someone that other people can easily know, like, and trust. But that sounds like a platitude. Specifically, how do you do that? There's lots of different approaches you could take to begin to build those relationships. Today's guest is an expert at building empathy with your consumer, your customer, your client, whatever audience that you're trying to impact. And he does it through storytelling. And so I really love this because this is part of my academic interest as well in narrative persuasion and storytelling. So I'm really pleased to welcome Rob Volpe. He is an astute observer of life, and he is a master storyteller who brings empathy and compassion to the human experience. Rob founded Ignite 360 to deliver actionable strategy grounded in meaningful consumer insights presented through story and creative ways that drive results. Rob, welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. Hello, Ralph. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you uh, as someone who is working in the same area that I am interested in, both professionally and academically. How do we harness the power of stories to move people to take action? You have worked and have consulted with many of the world's leading brands. You also have worked with uh, emerging and startup companies. Tell us a little bit about how you got into this business and what is your story? How did you get interested in in this aspect of storytelling? Sure, um, I, I've always uh, I've always had a knack for telling stories. I think, and also for having empathy with other people. Um, from my time growing up in in Indiana, in a small town, um, as I moved through my career. Um, I was intrigued with the idea of marketing and the power of um, how you can influence consumer behavior and perceptions um, through kind of advertising and all of that. And as I moved into the marketing space and started to dig a bit further, um, what finally became apparent was the role that consumer insights plays. And it's really about understanding and connecting with who your consumer was. And I had, you know, it's one of those stories where like I had demonstrated all of that. The things that I got really excited about in my career was like going to a focus group or opportunities where I was at one point in promotional marketing and doing sampling events where we were handing out samples of it was Starbucks ice cream at the time it was launching in the the mid late nineties. And I absolutely loved being able to engage and interact with people and understand how they think and feel. Um, it was through a, a uh, layoff of my own um, back in 2006. I'd been working in promotional marketing at a toy company. Um, they had you know, some budget issues, decided to let me go. And as I spent um, most of 2006 kind of figuring out what I wanted to do next, um, I had started doing a little bit of side work with some research firms that I had met through the youth marketing circuit. And um, you know, very fortuitously, the owner of one of those firms had said to me one day, she's like, I'm looking for somebody just like you who can do the strategic thinking, the storytelling, the deck writing, but that can also moderate. And we played the name game and tried to figure out like somebody we knew in common that might fit the bill. She was looking to hire. And three days later, I was like, 
outside in a swimming pool doing the backstroke, looking up at the beautiful California <laughs> sunshine. And it dawned on me, I was like, wait a minute, I like talking to people. Maybe I'd be good at this. Um, and that's what then got me on this path of getting into marketing research. And so I was in my mid late thirties at that point. So it was definitely another shift in my career. Uh, at that point, I got trained to moderate a friend had a, a a uh, research firm, a uh, small research practice. And she was like, go get uh, you trained and let me know. And so I did that uh, in January, 2007. And a month later, I was standing in the frozen vegetable aisle in a Walmart in Allentown, Pennsylvania, waiting to see if shoppers would come through and notice and, and hopefully buy a test product that uh, Green Giant, a General Mills brand at the time, that they were, were testing uh, to see if they could take to a national launch. And I was hooked and I <laughs> loved it. Um, it was an amazing, you know, it was just, it was amazing and being able to bring those stories back. It was what I always loved about the promotional events that I used to do and, and sharing the stories of the consumer, um, you know, as it relates to the product, but really making, representing the humanity and who these people are and why this product may or may not fit into their life. So, I totally got hooked there. I worked with that firm for a few years. Uh, and then we got to a, a place where, you know, it was, there were equity conversations that didn't go the way I had wanted them to. And I had always had an entrepreneurial spirit uh, and drive and take a lot of ownership over my work. And I had helped grow this firm um, and was at the place where, um, I either was going to hopefully have some equity or not. They weren't able to do that, uh, they, but they needed to make me an employee. And so I'll never forget the day. It was in November of 2010, and I had the contract from them. Um, it was a very incredibly generous uh, proposal and an offer. Um, <clears throat> you know, money wasn't really the issue, but I saw my name, you know, it was a legal contract. And so I said, first line, I saw my name and then I saw in parentheses with, you know, the word employee as the definition and who mm. I was going to be. Mm. And every, every fiber of my being was screaming out to me, no, this is wrong. This isn't you. Wow. And yeah, I mean, like, you know, and I'm a big believer in the universe and the messages that you get from whatever higher power. And the, that was one that was coming in so loud and clear um, that I can't even imagine like what would have happened had I not listened to it. So I took a deep breath and was like, all right, I need to go and start this firm. And a couple months later, uh, Ignite 360 was born and launched in January 2011. Very and, exciting. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's been, you know, as with so many entrepreneurial stories, you know, nine years later, the ups and downs um, that we all face in trying to see, is, is this a thing? Is it going to take off? And then how do you maintain flight uh, once you do? And, you know, we've run into plenty of turbulence over the years. Some of it, uh, and I don't know that you can ever anticipate all of it, but some of it to be expected. And then you have these sort of black swan and crisis events like we've been experiencing, you know, in, in 2020 um, and, and figuring out how to navigate. But it's been um, a really rewarding experience so far um, and something that I, I continue to love and really love being able to help our clients understand who their consumers are and, and see the point of view of their consumer, the role that their business might play in their consumer's life. And it, you know, consumer could be your end user, but it's also your customer or your client. It's that other person that's somehow engaged in the product, the service, the work that you actually do. Um, and being able to, to get people to a place where they can listen uh, and not just hear it, but listen and understand and then be inspired to take action. Hmm. Very cool. Uh, what I love about your story, Rob, is it's so similar to mine in that I also started out in marketing and then I discovered the power of of storytelling and connecting with people, um, the the H to H human to human uh, role in marketing. And that led me to strategic communication as the real leverage 
that you have in a marketing campaign. It's not about your marketing. It's about your messaging. And then taking that even a step deeper, it's how you craft these narratives. And in your case, as a master storyteller, uh, you mentioned building empathy. And we're, we're, you said that a couple of times. Help us to make that connection. The importance of empathy when it comes to telling a story and using that in a marketing communication. Connect those dots for us and, and explain why that's important. Sure. Um, we move through and we collectively humanity, we move through life with um, they could you know, call them blinders. They could be, you know, rose colored glasses, prisms. Um, we see the world the way we want to see it often. And that means, and particularly if you're um, working in an organization, in a company, and particularly if you're in a larger company, mid sized to larger company, you don't always have a clear vision of who your consumer is and what is it that's um, motivating them to, to buy or engage with your product. Um, I think usually, you know, when you think about the life cycle of a company, the entrepreneur is definitely connected with the problem that a consumer might have. It may be something that they've witnessed or it might be something that they've experienced themselves. And so as companies get going, they can easily hear the, the vision of the, um, the founder. But then over time, the founder may leave or the company just gets big enough that they lose touch with that. And then when you get into a large company, you know, you've, you've familiar probably with the phrase, the ivory tower. It really is like that, where you are so removed and separated from who your consumer is that it's difficult for you to sometimes connect and understand who they are. Um, and that's all about having empathy. And if you don't understand who they are, your messaging is going to end up being tone deaf and you're not going to, I mean, just from striking the right tone, but even understanding what the message is that you should be sharing with them and, and something that's relevant um, and meaningful to the consumer so that they will then ultimately buy your product. And I'm using kind of advertising related or communications related terms, but it also applies to product development, innovation, um, and even understanding the way your consumer, and again, could be consumer, customer, client, et cetera, but what their path to purchase is and how they go about making that um, decision and the journey that they go on to getting to considering your product and then actually purchasing it or your product or service. Mm -hmm. um, empathy then helps break through that. And it's just being able to see the point of view of somebody else, it, you know, to, to walk a mile in their shoes as them, um, to be able to take that perspective. I really love how you put that. It's, and we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. And what people mostly yeah. want to hear is they don't care about your opinion. They care about their own opinion coming out, coming out of your mouth. That's what they want to hear. Um, so the what the way Traditional marketing and messaging goes about trying to establish themselves is to talk about themselves, how great they are, uh, how, how many, uh, how many customers and clients they have served, how wonderful their product and service is. And nobody cares about that. What they care about is what are my problems? What are my needs? What are my concerns? And how in the world am I going to get those needs, uh, Met, how am I going to get those problems solved? And so the, the customers, uh, the, the, the clients, the consumers, or even the constituents, if we're talking about trying to sell ideas, for example, in a cause or in a nonprofit organization, it's never about you, the brand. It's always about the audience. It's always about what's going on in them with them and how can we help them achieve their goal? And that does require a level of empathy that most brands don't have, because frankly, most of the time we're thinking about ourselves, how to grow the business, how to get more clients, how to make more money. And we haven't really invested ourselves in understanding who we are called to serve. So that sets up my next question. 
How can we build empathy in our business, in our brand, in our organization, whatever it is, whoever we're trying to impact in the world? How do we do this and build empathy in a way that creates genuine, authentic relatability and relationship? Yeah, it's a great question. And the, you know, it, it starts with understanding or, or recognizing that you don't necessarily understand or relate to your consumer. <laughs> um, and That's that a big is revelation, a isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it 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 is, but you have to, you know. I've worked with enough companies where, you know, I've got um, clients that are, you know, in the top, you know, kind of five to ten percent um, of income and education and, and status. Yet they're making products that are geared towards a very mainstream or even working class uh, consumer base, and they don't understand what that experience is like and what that life is like. So being able to recognize that instead of just going, I don't know why people would pay this much for, you know, think about like classic example I give is Greek yogurt. Um, That totally upended the yogurt category. And we were working with um, uh, one of the yogurt manufacturers at the time and it completely changed everything. And I remember sitting in some meetings at our clients' offices where a business unit director was like, I don't understand why somebody would pay $1.25 for a cup of yogurt because their <laughs> product you know, was 55, 60 cents on a weekly basis. And it's like, well, yeah, you've got to get an understanding. And that understanding is empathy. And one other piece that I'll add to it too, empathy is a really kind of scary word for people because it relates to or, and has elements of emotion around it. And that's not something that we're always comfortable with. And one of the things is we're coaching empathy and, and training. We help people understand, I'm, I'm not looking for people. We don't, you don't need to have what we call affective empathy, which is that deeper like emotion. I feel your pain as you are feeling it or whatever the emotion is that you're feeling. We're trying to go for cognitive empathy, which is, you know, deeper than where most people tend to to exist, but isn't all the way as deep as as effective empathy. So cognitive empathy is about being able to see the perspective of somebody else. It's a bit more, it's cognitive. It's still a little bit more in the head rather than in the heart, but it, it can be very powerful. And so once you understand that, it's like, okay, we're only trying to get to cognitive empathy. It's still kind of an, an intellectual exercise. Um, then it's understanding the five steps to building empathy and having empathy. Um, and this is what we've um, identified and developed over the years and all of the conversations we've had both with consumers and working with clients. And the first step and the biggest hurdle most people have is dismantling judgment. And again, as we said, we see the world as as you were mentioning, we see the world as we see it and it's through our own lens. And there's just judgment inherent in that. Um, And it's not, you know, judgment of like, oh, do I walk down the dark alley or not? This is judgment around biases and stereotypes and prejudice based on past experiences and life. And if you don't dismantle your judgment, you're not even going to be able to get to the next steps, which, you know, the the one after that is asking good questions, asking very open questions, um, letting somebody share their experience with you without you giving them yes, no choices or not even asking a question at all. And then you've got to actively listen. So really hear what the person is saying and try to understand it um, and start to then in fourth step, integrate into your own understanding. And this is where people start to get a little confused because having empathy doesn't mean you give up your own world of view. It just means that you are making room to understand somebody else's and possibly recognize that it exists and see the world from their point of view as you need to. And just being able to access that, Hmm. which then leads into the the fifth step, which is using solution imagination. So that's where you're really putting the shoes on and starting to try to walk as somebody else uh, and imagine what it might feel like to be them in that particular moment. Um, So you've got understanding of these five steps. So you, you need to understand all of that 
first if you're really going to be successful in building empathy with your consumer and, and harnessing the power of your consumer and being close to your consumer in your work. Then you need to actually go out and practice it. Um, and go out and have the conversations and listen to people and not just listening to people that are just like you or who you want your consumer to be, but to take a critical eye at your under, at, at the data that you have on who your consumer really is. And then going out and finding and soliciting feedback and being ready to hear the good, the bad and the ugly, knowing that, you know, it's a gift. It's a gift that people are giving you. And that feedback and you're being able to connect and see the world the way that they're seeing it and being able to take action against it. So it's going out, doing the research, having the conversations, doing the listening, and then coming back and starting to, to make sense of it. And oftentimes... Um, and most, more often than not, clients need to have that objective third party to do that actual work with them and or for them, which is why Ignite360 or other firms like ours end up being asked to, to come in and help out. Exactly. That, and I, I was going to say that is such a powerful five-step framework for building empathy. I mean, you could really take that and, and adapt that to any organization, any professional services for, firm, any business or brand, mm -hmm. any nonprofit, cause-based, mission-based organization. you got to find out who you're serving before you can serve them at a higher level. And if you'll do that, this is the real rebelpreneur mindset. If you'll do, do that consistently, the advantage is almost no one else is doing that and they're not doing it very well. You immediately distinguish yourself and set yourself apart as someone who is so valuable and so important in the lives of their customers, uh, uh, your clients, your consumers, whoever you are impacting with uh, with your story mm -hmm. and with your message. What a powerful framework that is. And as you said, Rob, most people are not able to do that for themselves. If they could, they would have already done it. But we get so lost in our own blinded, uh, narrow-minded, stereotypical frames that we lose sight of the customer. We lose sight of the client. We think we're providing value and what we, what we think is valuable is not valuable to the other person that we're trying to impact. So there's a mismatch there. And if we were able to do this for ourselves, then certainly we would, but most people are not. And that's where Ignite 360 comes in. Um, what are you working on right now? And, and give us some examples of, of things that you're doing right now to help build empathy and work with, with your clients to be able to work with their clients and consumers. Sure. So, um, and just to build on, on what you're, you're um, mentioning, Ralph, this is where storytelling then starts to come into play because it really is then about how you're taking, because you may have gone out, a small group of people gone out and had these amazing experiences interacting and listening to your customers, but then you've got to then socialize it within the rest of the organization. And how do you do that? And how do you craft a story that's going to be meaningful and actually inspire people to change their behavior, which is one of the hardest things that we have to do. And so that's the kind of piece that comes after that um, is really creating the story, the narrative. And often it's about philosophically the way we approach it is, you know, it's looking at the story of the individual backed up with the data. Um, but you, you respond more to even looking at current events right now. You respond differently to the story of George Floyd getting killed in Minneapolis by the police um, because it's a, a single individual compared to when you hear a statistic about the number of African-American men and their likelihood, you know, they're two sometimes, I, I don't know the exact number, but let's say they're, you know, five times as likely to be killed by the police than a white man. 
that's a powerful number. But then when you're actually seeing it in um, the story of George Floyd and that one individual, you relate to it on such a different level and you are actually more likely to act on it, um, especially then if you can put those two pieces of data together. So you've got the head, which is the you know 5X or 2X, that number of um, African-American men who are uh, uh, killed by police officers and more likely to be killed by police officers. And then the story of that one individual, it's incredibly compelling and it will inspire you to act much more than just throwing out, um, the statistic. That, that's um, the a great statistic. example. Yeah. That, that, that's yeah. a powerful <laughs> example. And, and we're seeing that happening. Um, I, I, I heard, um, but to, just to follow up on that, I, I heard, uh, people, on television professors of, of economics or whoever they are talk about how in the long run that, um, that looting and, and rioting actually has a, an economic, economically depressive, um, uh, effect on the neighborhoods, the poorest neighborhoods. Um, it, it's, and they gave the statistics on why it doesn't make rational sense, but what they're missing is it's not about rationality. It's about heart. It's about, emotion it's about anger so of course you could make the logical case that it doesn't make sense but uh, people don't behave logically and so whatever the narrative is it has to touch the heart in in order to reach the head if, could we sum it up by by saying that is probably going to be more effective than just trying to give people statistics um, putting that into a business context it means you've got a list of features and benefits, and that's great and it's logical, but you've got to be able to to express that not just in logical, rational terms, but in the context of a story, in a narrative of how people took your product and used those features and benefits to their advantage in a way that solved the problems they needed to solve and delivered the results that they were trying to get. And that's when we make that connection. And that's when we touch the heart as well as the head. Exactly. Absolutely. 100% correct. And to answer the question that you had asked me before I went on to the, the tangent around, it's not really a tangent, it's very relevant, but talking about the storytelling. Um, so some things that we're doing and resources that your listeners are welcome to tap into. Um, there's a lot of information. We, we write quite a bit around empathy. Um, the five steps are detailed there, but we also offer up empathy camps. So we actually do training for people, typically in organizations, um, on how what the five steps are, what they mean, what their own experiences have been, and help them unpack all of that. We do that you know, on its own individually or in conjunction with a, a research project. It kind of just depends on what the client's needs are. We also have that I think um, relevant to our conversation, we have a program called Story Masters, which is ongoing um, training on storytelling because there's a recognition. We, we noticed a couple of years ago, there was a recognition that storytelling was really important. And we need to figure out how to tell better stories. But people weren't actually, they, you know, you'd go to a lecture or a webinar or something, and it would just be telling people that, yeah, storytelling is important <laughs> and not telling people how to actually do that. Um, you know, one of our foundations is helping, you know, it's giving you the news you can use and understanding how to apply things. So we created Story Masters as an ongoing, it's free, you just have to sign up for it. Um, but it's a monthly um, piece of content that comes out that helps you understand how to uh, tell stories and how to make sense of the data and understand the different types of storytelling, but also the ways people um, take in information and process it. Uh, most recently, we, we've the last couple of months, we've been talking about the big idea and how to find that and how to frame that up. Um, so again, off of our website, there's a lot of great information. And on our homepage, you'll see a, a, at the top and mention Story Masters. You can click there and sign up for it. The other thing that we've done, incredibly relevant to the times that we're living in now, we've started a project called Navigating to a New Normal. And so we're looking at what's happening. It was evident when the pandemic was, was starting to take effect that this was really all of going to be a huge inflection point in our society. A new generation is going to come out of this. 
um, and the ways that people think and behave were going to be changing. And now is the time to start to track that. And so we've been doing a combination, again, head and heart. Uh, we've been doing a combination of quantitative, ongoing, rolling data. Um, but we also have weekly one-on-one -on -one conversations. We've been following uh, 14 consumers uh, since the very beginning of April. Um, having weekly in-depth conversations with them about what's going on, you know, related to the pandemic, but we've also explored a lot of other uh, deeper issues for them from faith to uh, finances to freedom and travel. Um, we're, you know, because of, of what's been happening with the riots, we've incorporated that into our conversations. We're hearing some really amazing stories um, around the prejudice that people experience in their own lives, be it racism or sexism or homophobia or other forms of discrimination and, and what people think of and see as the path forward. We're creating out of all of that. We offer it to our clients. We offer it up to the public as well. And there are ways for clients to get involved in a more deeper custom level. But to the general public, we put out um, a thought piece a white paper, a webinar every two weeks. Uh, we started in the beginning of May, or actually middle of April, sorry, chapter four is available. Chapter five is coming shortly and those will be continuing uh, as this project continues to progress. And those are also all available on our website. It's a free download. Very powerful resources. It, 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 you've got a lot of great content and great uh, resources for people to just go take advantage of. And then if they need to reach out to you and, uh, and explore a professional relationship, then they can do that as well. The website is ignite-360.com. That's ignite-360.com. And we'll have that link on the Rebelpreneur website as well. I think that's really important because a lot of people, when you tell them, Hey, telling stories is the, is the solution here. Uh, people who don't know any better, they tend to kind of disregard that as self-evident and they assume that they know how to tell stories. Well, of, of course. OK, yeah, tell stories. And sometimes the advice that comes down is just very uh, general. Tell more stories. But you and I both know, Rob, that there's a right way and a wrong way to tell a story. If you have ever been to a movie and you watched it and you thought, well, you know, that movie just wasn't so great. But then you go and watch another movie and it's a blockbuster what is the difference you could say well it's it's the it's the technical uh, aspects of what uh, the movie was all about or or the special effects or computer generated graphics or whatever and maybe but i'm i'm convinced that it's probably the story impacted you on a deeper level and that's why one movie is a blockbuster and another is just a dud yeah. Oh, absolutely. If, if the story is solid, the story is the foundation of everything. If the story is solid in that movie example, you'll overlook bad acting right. or kind of cheesy special effects um, because the story is engaging and it's gripping. And, you know, we're as, as humans evolved and learned to communicate, we've been communicating through story. And that's kind and, of the, of the um, cliche of the, of the over the top action adventure movie that's got a lot of explosions, you know, a lot of, a lot of graphic violence, but not much of a story behind it. And there, there is a, a segment of the population that will watch that, but you won't watch it over and over again. And you won't come away from that thinking, wow, that, that really impacted my life. It was more like a roller coaster ride. You, you had a rush of adrenaline, but it didn't really create a, a shift in your life the way movies with very powerful narratives and stories uh, can impact people. There's so much here and so much we could dig into that um, lots of lessons that we can take away from this conversation and begin to apply them effectively in our businesses, in our organizations, and also in our relationships as human beings with other human beings as we wrestle with some of these larger societal issues as well. So again, the website is ignite-360.com, ignite-360. Rob, it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show today. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to leave us with, uh, with a couple of minutes to spare? 
Sure. Thanks, Ralph. And it, it's been a really enjoyable conversation. And then I wish we had more time. Um, I think the final thought for people is, you know, it, 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 the biggest hurdle we see repeatedly and that we even experience ourselves is our own judgment. And so the real key thing to try to master is figuring out how to dismantle your judgment so that you can actually listen to other people, whether that's professionally or personally, all of those skills apply in every aspect of your life. Uh, and if you take the time to do that, you'll be really pleasantly surprised at what you discover uh, by listening to other people without judgment. Excellent. Great words of advice from Rob Volpe. He is the founder of Ignite360, delivering actionable strategy grounded in meaningful consumer insights presented through story and creative ways that drive results. Find out more at ignite-360.com. Rob, I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us on Rebelpreneur Radio. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ralph. Really enjoyed it. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.